What is the best affiliation in Marvel Crisis Protocol right now today? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, Rich from Rich Me Gaming. Hope everyone is doing fantastically well. And this is a video that's slightly different, but does very much tie into the tier list that I've been putting together at the moment. And before anybody turns off and stops watching, don't worry, for all you tier list haters out there, this is not another tier list. Although I am considering doing a tier list of my favorite tier list, but maybe that's one for the future. Um, no, what I want to look at today are the statistics. I love going in and doing a deep dive on the metadata of the game, and one fantastic resource for that is the website Longshanks. There'll be a link down in the description below. If anyone's ever attended uh, an event uh, of Marvel Crisis Protocol, you may have used that, uh, or your, your event organizer, may have been using that to organize the event but as well as being a great tool for both ranked and unranked events it is also an amazing repository of every single game played fully recorded on there uh, showing the affiliations that were taken the leaders that were taken in those affiliations what crisis cards you play so on and so forth so for someone like me who creates content it's a bit of a gold mine especially when you don't mind getting deep down and dirty with those numbers and one thing i've been wanting to do for a little while and with the recent changes that we had sort of at the back end of June this year those recent changes being obviously the introduction of the standard uh, timeline where we lost a whole bunch of tactics cards we obviously had the fallout of uh, version 1.5 of MCP way back when in November uh, and we've had the new big bad in Marvel Crisis Protocol Malekith all of that sort of happened around about the sort of June time um, so that's been my cutoff point so all of the data that I've collected, we don't go any further back than, I think, June 22 or June 24, something like that. Um, so it's everything from then up until now. And hopefully, even though we've had a couple of other little changes with, uh, you know, the change to Malekith's card, obviously we've just had Follow Me being put on the restricted list. I don't think those in isolation will change things too much, but there has been plenty of games over that period of time time uh, a grand total of uh, almost 7,000 actually recorded on Longshanks and for only three months that's a, a pretty high number so plenty of data to look at um, but I was interested I was intrigued um, are my thoughts of the game or where I'm putting certain affiliations at the moment is that the truth or are there just people out there who are playing them in a slightly different way to I do and having uh, much more success so what I thought was I would take a look at the data because the data doesn't lie it's not subjective it's not objective it is just what has happened uh, and I thought we would plot it out to find the best and worst affiliations but also then the best and worst leaders in each of those affiliations as well so let's jump over to the little chat and we'll go through what we're going to be plotting out. So here we go guys. Um, so we've got quite a bit to go through, but you can see here running from top to bottom uh, on that uh, vertical axis is going to be the total number of games played. Because uh, that does have some bearing on things. You know, if an affiliation has only just come out, for example, and has a limited amount of data on there, it may be skewed slightly. You know, if one person has played Sentinels, for example, which is what is on long chance at the moment, and they've won one game, um, that's not a good representation. Um, so we've got an idea of how many games have been played. And then across the uh, horizontal axis, we've then got the percentage win rate. Um, so as I mentioned, we are taking data from sort of back end of June up until now. So let's jump straight into it. But before we do, let's take a quick look at those percentage win rates and look at what they mean and what they can mean for a particular affiliation at the moment. Well, obviously 50% straight down the middle um, in an ideal perfect world, every single affiliation, every single leader would win 50% of their games. And that's obviously not going to be the case. Um, I think 5% either way, so anywhere between 45% and 55% 
is acceptable. I think that shows that you have a very, very balanced game. Anything outside of those, so any affiliation or indeed lead that's coming in at more than 55%, that we can maybe take a look at what those reasons are behind it. Is it because they're a newer affiliation, they've got some new tech that people are getting used to, or is it because they are just that little bit overpowered and they maybe need to be toned down ever so slightly? And then again, anything below 45%, um, it could be a new affiliation. So, you know, it could be an affiliation that people just haven't got their, their heads around yet. They're still working them out. But equally, if it's an older affiliation, kind of the opposite, you know, maybe that affiliation is going to need some TLC or does need some TLC uh, just to make them a little bit more relevant in the game. Uh, and lastly, just to clarify, uh, we have looked at both ranked and unranked games on here as well. So without further ado, let's jump straight in and let's go into A4. So 230 games played in total with a 40% win rate. So already starting out, we're below the curve with uh, with Air Force. I was quite surprised with this one. Um, I thought that Air Force were in a particularly good spot at the moment. I thought with the changes to the tactics cards, um, it's you know, potentially really helped them more than hindered them. But maybe the loss of that med pack and that field dressing is really, really hampering Air Force because the moment you take that six threat She-Hulk off the board, they're not left with much else in there. So uh, that's maybe the reason why. Next then we have Asgard, 357 games played, but only a 45% win rate. Obviously Heimdall and uh, Scourge, not quite enough to drag them up back towards that 50%, but 45% is still okay. I would still definitely like to see some new additions into Asgard, and they do seem to have been doing better of late, so who knows, we could see that go up over the next couple of months. Um, coming up next then are the OGs or at least one of the OGs of Marvel Crisis Protocol that is the Avengers and no surprise guys 961 games almost a thousand games played over the past couple of months uh, sort of 300 more than any other affiliation out there uh, but they do only have a 49% win rate with only 474 wins um, I think 49 is absolutely fine not a problem whatsoever with that well within that sort of 5% up and down that we would expect um, coming in next then is the old big bad of Marvel Crisis Protocol, and that is the Black Order. Obviously, now they have an extra leader. We'll go through that in a little while, but 382 games played uh, and a 47% win rate. So definitely not as high as what I personally expected. I still thought Black Order were in a very, very good position, um, but I think um, the changes to the cards especially now making them restricted, uh, has probably hindered them a little bit, meaning that if they want to take the the gems that they want to take, they're really missing out on any other restricted cards, so that really, you know, out the window for anything like patch up or sacrifice or anything like that, so maybe that has hurt them quite a bit. Uh, Brotherhood of Mutants coming in at 520 two games in total very much holding their own with that uh, 51 percentage win rate so doing really really well there uh, cabal definitely an affiliation that have bumped up the rankings of late um, before malekith came out guys these guys were running at about a 35 percent win rate one of the worst affiliations in the game but 505 games played 52% of those were wins and we'll take a look in a little bit as to how much heavy lifting Malekith is actually doing in there. Uh, another affiliation that people weren't really sure with, they've got lots of complex things which means that typically it's a higher ceiling but it's a higher barrier uh, to entry but Convocation coming in at 319 games played in total, 175 wins 55% win rate. Unfortunately for Convocation, we don't have the breakdown as to uh, what the leader was taken. Uh, so we just know that that's generally across the board, but you could probably put your money on the fact that the majority of those games are either going to be Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, 
or Baron Modo. They seem to be the firm favourites at the moment. An affiliation that I didn't think was as popular as it was, and that is Criminal Syndicate. I know a lot of people jumped on the Shadowlands Daredevil bandwagon, uh, and again, we'll see how much he's done, but 635 games played in total. 343 wins, doing very, very well at the moment with a 54% win rate. This next one, guys, is a big shock for me. Not for the number of games played with only 164, Dark Dimension, and most definitely not for everybody, but with a 53% win rate, these guys are doing very, very well for themselves at the moment. So maybe if you've been on the fence about Dark Dimension, whether you want to make that big investment into Dormammu, maybe he's in a pretty good spot at the moment and it's not a bad time to jump on that bandwagon. Oh, the saddest, saddest of all affiliations in Marvel Crisis Protocol at the moment. We've been talking about it on this channel for a long time, how they need some love. They've got a fantastic leadership, but unfortunately, just no identity, no tactics cards that are worth taking. It is, of course, Defenders. Only 156 games, and for an affiliation with so many loved characters in there, really, really sad to see them so low down. But even worse is that 37% win rate. AMG, come on guys, it's time. We need some new things for the Defenders. An affiliation next who have had a huge resurgence, both uh, after the big changes that happened in November, but I also think some of the other changes that have come into play lately have helped them as well. It is, of course, those lovable misfits, the Guardians of the Galaxy. 527 wins in total and a 50% win rate. So even in a meta at the moment that seems to be getting taller and taller and taller they must definitely holding their own so doing very very well in humans an affiliation that are kind of just a bit meh to me um they've got some amazing characters i know ron won't like me for this one but not a fan of black ball as a leader but 126 games played so still one of the lowest represented however a 48 percent win rate so Clearly, people that are going out there and playing in humans are doing something right because I don't think that's bad at all. Another affiliation that I think people just wanted to be better than what they were, and unfortunately, I think they suffer from the fact they have a lot of very, very good characters and they maybe count, counter each other out a little bit, but it is Midnight Suns, 279 games played, but a respectable 48% win rate. Um, some new boys on the block next, and it is uh, Mr. Nick Fury and his shield. 304 games played, obviously um, one of, if not the, actually one of the newer affiliations in here, there is one other one that's been out since, at least for this list, um, so 304 games played in total with guys, a whopping 63% win rate, right now Shield as an affiliation have the highest win rate in the game, um, I think there's a lot of tech they answer a lot of questions that are asked for them. They are very, very good against uh, not just a Cabal-led Malekith, but anybody with Malekith at the moment. They deal with um, tall rosters or tall squads very, very well. They're in an absolutely great spot, uh, and that 63% win rate just shows it. spider Foes. Uh, an affiliation that I've really been wanting to try out more, but could just never really make work. 280 games, so they've still got plenty of representation, uh, but only a 43% win rate. I think they need a couple of extra characters to really help them out. I think they could do with at least one two threat, just to bulk out that roster a little bit. But 43% uh, still okay, not too far off where we want them to be. Um, unaffiliated next, I've put them in here because obviously... Um, I played quite a lot of unaffiliated earlier this year, uh, and they're doing pretty well. Um, 39 games in total, which is the lowest of all by far. But guys, 22 of those have been wins, giving them a 56% win rate. So right now, unaffiliated are doing better than almost every other affiliation in the game. Uh, but it's such a small number that it's probably not... A, uh, a fair a fair thing to look at. Next up then is an affiliation who I didn't think were going to be as high up as they are. Um, they're obviously beloved, so that 493 games played is not surprising. It is, of course, your uncanny X-Men, but with a 51% win rate. Um, we 
have been known to talk down to the uh, to the X Men in the past, uh, but I actually think they're in a very very good spot at the moment. Particularly the ladies of that affiliation, female uh, female mutants in this game are doing very very well. They've got a particular style that they like to play. They love those flip objectives. So yeah, maybe go and check out some X Men if you haven't done for a little while. Wakanda, the old number one, big, not necessarily big bad, but very, very hard to play against affiliation. Um, they've definitely dropped down the pecking order in terms of number of games played, but they're definitely holding their own in terms of win percentage. So 217 games played with a 55% win rate. So doing very, very well for themselves, even with all of those changes uh, that were predominantly nerfs to uh, to those characters uh next up we've got the webheads web warriors 505 games played holding their own still up the, in the upper echelon of uh, mcp affiliations with a 55 percent win rate new guys on the block uh winter guard 135 games now you know they've not been out that long so that's not surprising whatsoever uh these guys have come in with a 45 percent win rate and i mentioned earlier that that could be because they're still quite new people are still working out their niches what they're good at um so i think that we could see that going up i actually think winter guard have got a couple of little tricks up their sleeve so i wouldn't be surprised to see that number go up over the next couple of months and then rounding out all of the affiliations are the x-force um they're not in a good spot at the moment i really wish they were much much better than what they were a lot of it comes down to that very poor leadership on a five threat character and really the lack of tactics cards that they have access to because they've got some pretty good characters in there 200 game played but only 77 wins giving them the second worst win rate of any affiliation in the game at 39 percent okay then guys so there we go as we have it right now the most competitive affiliation in the game are shield it's that's just what it is 63 percent head and shoulders above anybody else out there at the moment but for anyone that knows, uh, some of these affiliations have some very good leaders. Some of these affiliations have some not particularly good leaders. And I'm sure if we do a little bit more of a deep dive, we're going to find a little bit more information in there um, that can maybe uh, show some other things that we didn't expect. So let's jump in then and take a look at the affiliations that have multiple leaders and how each of those individual leaders are performing at the moment. Now, again, it's important to note that these are just when these characters are being played as a leader. It's not when they're being taken as anything else. So jumping straight in, let's go back to our chart and add a couple of extra little dots on here. Uh, we're going to start with the Avengers. Um, so coming in uh, first, um, not first place by any stretch, but um, a character that we kind of forget about a little bit, but you know, maybe Maybe he is the answer to a few things that we're seeing in the game at the moment. It is the Hulkbuster, only 37 games played. Uh, so not the lowest uh, represented uh, leader in the game at the moment, but most definitely one of them. Uh, but with 18 wins, actually, 49% uh, win rate. So he's right in line with that 49% win rate overall for the Avengers. Uh, Sam Wilson next, 223 games played, 136 win rate. Um, we spoke a lot about how Steve is now the most popular leader in the Avengers. You know, Sam Wilson is kind of fallen by the wayside. But guys, 61% win rate on Sam Wilson. He's doing some heavy, heavy lifting in the Avengers, which unfortunately means Steve Rogers, 701 games played. So more games played than any other leader by far. Again, head and shoulders above everybody else when it comes to most popular. But only a 46% win rate. Um, so really, really interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Steve to be propping up the Avengers at the moment, especially when we're looking at just the last few months worth of data. So very, very interesting. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that changes over the coming uh, sort of weeks and months. But uh, yeah, guys, maybe 
maybe if you're playing Avengers, it's time to go back and take a look at Sam Wilson because people are out there doing a really, really good job. Who know? Who knows? Maybe that is the answer to Malekith that everyone has been looking for. Um, on to Black Order next then. And not surprisingly, Thanos has got more games in there than his counterpart, Corvus Glaive. So 214 games for Thanos, 110 wins, giving him a very, very respectable 51% win rate. That's obviously above the 47% that they had for an affiliation, which again means Mr. Corvus Glaive only 168 games. So not too far behind, but 71 wins in total, giving him uh, a win rate of 42%. So very, very low. And I think one of the problems here with Corvus is that opportunity cost of his leadership, having to be one of your, uh, not only 10 tactics cards, but one of your five tactics cards that you take as well. So not particularly good for him. On to the Brotherhood of Mutants next then. And let's remind ourselves that as an affiliation, they had a 51% win rate. Mystique, Mystique people, 147 games, so nowhere near as many, but 85 wins. Guys, she has a 58% win rate. Do not sleep on Mystique. She has got some tricks up her sleeve. She can do some really, really good things. I believe she's one of the big counters to Malekith in the game at this very moment in time. She's propping up Brotherhood of Mutants. Magneto, 375 games, so definitely more uh, represented. But only 179 wins means he's below that 50% mark. Only 48% win rate. So, uh, yeah, if you're a Brotherhood player at the moment and you're struggling with what to do in the game, if you want to look at increasing that win rate, maybe it's time to go and take a look at Mystique. Uh, okay, guys, on to Cabal. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work up here. Uh, starting with Sin, uh, she is, I think, the second most... A second lowest represented character in this entire list of leaders with only 33 games in total. There have been more unaffiliated games uh, played uh, in the last couple of months and there have been people taking Sin, which is, which is sad. Uh, but nine wins, a 27% win rate. Um, so whilst we had the, uh, the actual lowest win rate of any uh, affiliation was defenders with 37 she has only a 27 percent win rate guys let me know what you think of that down in the comments section below do you think she is just completely underpowered do you just think people have not invested the time in her to get to understand and know how to play her really interested in what you think next up then we've got red school the og leader of cabal 189 games, so quite reasonably representative. But when you think about his counterpart in the core box, Steve Rogers, with 701, do we maybe think he needed a little bit of a tweak during that bigger rata that took place back in November? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure. I still think he's pretty good, but with only 68 wins, that is a win rate of 36%. So guys, you can see the dire straits that Cabal were in. But if we go back and look... They're actually at a 52% win rate. So let's get on to uh, the newest big bad in MCP. It is Malekith. 283 games, so very, very well represented. Uh, and again, that's not including any games that he's been taken in as a splash character or anything like that, which is the same for everybody else. Uh, 185 wins, giving him a 65% win rate. However, guys, however... We're going to circle back into there at the end of this video to compare him to some of the other characters. Because because right now, he's only 4% above Sam Wilson, um, which was a surprise to me. And whilst I still think um, people are... It's almost the opposite to what we spoke about with Winter Guard, where I think people are working out how to play Winter Guard. I actually think people are still figuring out and working out how to defeat Malekith. And I think this is representative of that. And I think once he starts getting up to four, five, six hundred games over the next couple of months, I think you're going to see that win rate drop down quite significantly. We've already started to see some hard counters to him. Um, so uh, yeah, watch this space on that one. Um, next up then uh, is Criminal Syndicate. 
almost evenly matched, uh, with Shadowlands Daredevil just pipping it at 330 games in total, um, but with 184 wins, 56% win rate. Shadowlands Daredevil is doing some work at the moment. Kingpin coming in at a respectable 305 games played, 159 um, wins, which at the moment means uh, they're the only two, they're the only affiliation where both leaders are actually above the 50% mark, uh, with Kingpin coming in at a 52% win rate. So well done to those guys. Okay then, so on to our penultimate affiliation with more than one leader. Let's again start at the bottom. Um, there isn't much love for this guy. Um, there, there really needs to be a change to some cards in this game. And for me, Cyclops is almost at the top of the list of a character that really, really needs some help. Only been played 39 times um, since the big changes have happened. Uh, 15 wins gives him a, a win rate of 38%. So really, really not good enough. Uh, Storm, however, is storming away. 454 games played. One of the highest that we've seen uh, from any leader in this game. 235 wins. She's the reason that X-Men have got a 51% win rate because 235 wins is giving her a 52% win rate. So, yeah, again, I've said it once, I'll say it before, X-Men are in a very, very good spot at the moment. And rounding out is the Web Warriors. And unfortunately, the Web Warriors, surprisingly to me, have the least played leader in the game. Mr. P Peter Parker, a.k.a. The Amazing Spider-Man, only 28 games played, 13 wins, so a 56% win rate, which is not bad. I actually don't think anything needs to change for Peter Parker. I think he's actually in a really, really good spot. I think his problem is he's up against one of the best leaders in the game right now with Mr. Miles Morales, 477 games played, 263 wins and a 55% win rate. Uh, so yeah, Web Warriors are in a very, very good spot as well at the moment, which you know we saw from their overall 55% win. It's quite interesting. Miles Morales has a 55% win rate, even though Peter Parker's is 46%. Because it's so few games, it's less than 10% of the number of games that Miles has played. Um, those, that 46% isn't enough to drag them down in the percentages whatsoever. And there we go, guys. That is a breakdown. Not my opinion, but the statistics uh, and what they show of every single affiliation in Marvel Crisis Protocol at the moment. How well they're doing, how bad they're doing. And I think we can see from that list there are definitely some... Uh, some affiliations, and in particular, some leaders who definitely need some TLC. But as we say in this game, it only takes one small change for a character who was out of favour to come back into favour, or a character who just seems to be ripping up local gaming stores left, right and centre, to all of a sudden be put back down in their place. Okay guys, so let's talk about Malekith and that 65% win rate. I do really, really think he is going to drop it. That's going to drop off over the next couple of months as people work out how to play against him. He's the new big bad at the moment. Sentinels are coming out. Maybe they're in answer to him. Uh, he's only got a 4% win rate better than Sam Wilson. He's only got a 2% win rate better than, uh, who was it, Nick Fury, right? So he is not leagues away from everybody else. Um, is he everywhere at the moment? Absolutely. I went to an event this weekend. Uh, I went three and one. I took my Cabalist. I went three and one. I played Malekith and Murdoch every single game. The only game that I didn't win this weekend believe it or not, was against a Sam Wilson Leadership Avengers. So there are absolutely uh, affiliations and characters and leaderships and combos that can beat him. He's just the big bad at the moment. He isn't broken. He's just good. Um, get your reps in. Understand what he does. Take a look at what counters him. And I promise you, there are most definitely ways out there to defeat him. Uh, and if you want some ideas on that one, go and check a video I did uh, a little while back. I'll put a link down in the description below talking about some really good counters to him.
Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different to a tier list, but I think it's a nice little snapshot of where the game is at the moment. As I mentioned, uh, all of this data was taken from Longshank, so a big shout out to Sam uh, for running that. And if you do want to support Longshanks, guys, they do have a Patreon. This isn't sponsored by Longshanks or anything like that. I just like to promote good things that I use, uh, and I think that's one of the best tools for Marvel Crisis Protocol at the moment. Um, if you have liked this video, please do leave a like. It really, really does help the whole YouTube algorithm thing uh, and if you want to support us even further you can do via patreon for as little as a pound a month and a huge shout out to all of our patreon supporters uh, who support us every single month and really really do help uh, contribute towards us being able to make this sort of content if you want a copy of this little chart, uh, it will be going up in our Discord. Uh, so there'll be a link down in the description below. So head on over and check that out. And as always, guys, it leaves me with just enough time to say stay well, keep safe, and until next time, bye for now.